Welcome to episode 20 of the DK Project with host Darren K. Meyer and Miss Natalie Webster. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Sit back, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Well, I need to go. I, I need to go. I need you to say go. Let's go! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the DK Project. We are here on a Tuesday with Miss Natalie. Are you live and local? I am live and local. I am in the state this time, back in Minnesota. How's the re-entry been? Are you uh, getting accustomed to 40 degrees? Oh, brutal. <laughs> well, I think it's supposed to be 60 today. I can't lie. It's The jet lag is ridiculous coming from Hawaii, but at the same time, I know better than to complain. <laughs> yeah, right, right, because no one's going to listen. You, uh, you, you were on the uh, good foot for quite a while. That's right. No one's going to listen to me complain about how tired I am because I came back from 10 days in Hawaii, so Man. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Someday when I grow up, that uh, that's going to be my deal. I uh, I envy that. But yeah, now, I, well, we're turning the corner. It's going to happen. We're, we're middle May, or now we're beginning uh, May, and uh, in Minnesota, that means we're going to start hitting 50 to 60 degrees. Yeehaw. Oh, yeah. And once we're, you know, we're ice out now on Lake Minnetonka. That's been the case for a little while. And it's as soon as that happens, I feel like we're kind of in the clear. I saw a water skier over the weekend on the lake. Okay, that's taking it a little too far. Did they have a wetsuit on? I think so. But you still have like exposed feet, face and hands. (laughs) I mean, what's the matter with these people? Water skiing is great, but let's be realistic, huh? Although, you know what? Uh, There's jet skis out there all the time. It's same, same. I got to think yeah. if you go in, there's going to be a problem. There's always somebody taking it to an extreme. That that doesn't bother me as much. Seeing, you know, watercraft early out on the lake doesn't bother me as much as one of my biggest, I guess you could call it a pet peeve in the wintertime, is when it's 20 below out and somebody's out jogging. That bugs me. Well, <laughs> those are real athletes, ultimate then athletes. Then I'm like, you're just I don't like seeing somebody jog when it's 50. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Makes me but feel you know, fatter than say, normal. It's always the runners, though. You got to, you know, we've talked about that, maintaining a healthy balance. You always hear somebody, you know, passes of a heart or has a heart attack. He was an athlete. He was a runner. Oh, my gosh. We're so shocked. Well, You're never going to hear that about me. Nope. Nope. <laughs> but that fr- <laughs> You and me both. I. Uh... She hated even walking. She <laughs> phoned it in half the time. We're not surprised at all. Uh, she actually <laughs> went down complaining about having to go outside and walk, and that uh, that's, that's what pushed you over the edge. <laughs> that's why I'm going to live to be 100, because I walk that, that, well, you got that good, more of that uh, balance. You got good uh, lineage there. We talked about... Uh, your 90-year-old aunt with the uh, sunglass collection, let me tell you. Grandma. Yeah, my 90-year-old grandma, oh, grandma. in the Guinness Book of World Records. Right on. We talked a little bit on my Thursday show last week about the uh, local cat who's got the world record for uh, fastest wheelie on a motorcycle. Like a Is that local? Yeah. Actually, I sold the guy a house. No way. Yeah, he so lives he's out here in Bonnie. Minnesota. Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. They go over to like Ireland or somewhere to do it, but... We had a little uh, uh, Guinness uh, World Record talk on the uh, the last show, which was kind of funny. But uh, no, I'm thinking you're off to a good start with your extended vacations. You're going to be uh, stress free, which is really how you win the race. You know, it's the stress that'll end up killing you in the end. Well, being Hawaiian, that's kind of how I try to live life. You know, it's kind of that Hakuna Matata. Okay. Live aloha. Nothing, nothing ever bothers me. But we try and maintain. You know, if can, can. If no can, no can. This That's bring, basically my life philosophy. This brings <laughs> up an, an an excellent point that I wanted to touch on, and it may be sensitive to some people, but here we go. So, being that you're Hawaiian, what are you one one generation removed? So, like your parents are from there. Yeah, my father and his family have always been from Hawaii. So, so this this brings up a good point with our with the royal baby news in the in the uh, in the media. Mm-hmm. How, uh, how far out and who who you know like like how long does that go? Like your kids as kids, your kids as kids as kids uh, can still claim to be Hawaiian. Like how far does that well, go? You know, I would imagine. I mean, they're going to be able to trace it back. You know, these days with like the ancestry dot com and twenty three and Me. It'll always show up. It'll Have you ever done one of those? Less and less. 
Yeah, I did. I did one not that long ago. My sister got it for me. She's really into it. She even DNAs her dogs. Oh, come on. So she knows where everybody is from. What the hell and do you DNA your That's someone who just pisses money away right there. Well, no, because when you adopt a dog and you don't know its background, it's easier to care for the dogs and the way that you train them might be a little bit different if you understand their breeding. Come on. And she adopts dogs, so... You know, she gets them from the pound. What does this cost? What does a DNA test cost? I've never done it. I don't know that I want to know. Maybe someday I do. I don't know. Maybe my kids will want to know. Like to be surprised. Yeah, but back to your question. It, you know, I I will tell you this. So my grandma in Hawaii lives on what's called this Hawaiian homestead property, Hawaiian homestead land, where she leases the land for something like a dollar a year, but she built and owns her home on the land. Now, my father and his brothers will be the last who can legally live there on the land. So they cannot pass the house down to my siblings and I, which is ridiculous. So is it a 100-year land lease, basically? And No, it's based on what percentage of Hawaiian you are. And Ooh. we end up being not enough. So now there, there are people in Hawaii who are working on changing this ridiculous law. Because can you imagine, Darren, if you couldn't pass the home you live in now down to your grandchildren purely because they won't be enough, you know, whatever you are? It's in your family. It's yours. It belongs to you. Well, is that... Is that so? Then what happens then once the family lineage dries up? Then what do they just put it on the open market, or does someone else get to lease it for a dollar? I can't believe that. You you have to be a certain percentage of Hawaiian to live on the land. You have to be a certain percentage of Hawaiian to own a house on the land. So she, it would have to be sold. And you know, Hawaiians. A lot of people don't know this. It's we are down to something like less than five hundred thousand Hawaiians on the planet, and that's not pure Hawaiians. We're all mixed. Yeah. There's very few pure Hawaiians left. When well, the And that's where my point comes from. Like like how you know, how far removed are we before we say, okay, we don't have any more, you know, Hawaiians. Any more, any more I, Hawaiians? I think we're generations from it, but the way things are going, I mean, that's kind of something not really talked about. It is one race that I mean, you're down to five hundred thousand. That's not a lot. No. Well it's no. A, it's not a very big area, so technically no, it's not. Those are yeah. decent numbers. No, I don't know. But yeah. So, so back to the, so what the, else? the royal family, man. I'm thrilled to death about this. You have no idea how excited I am about this baby. What? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm so excited. Why? She's one, she's American. Secondly, she's multiracial, which thrills me more than anything else. We now have a royal in the royal family with a tie to America who's also part black. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I just think it's so, it really shows. I mean, can you imagine just even a generation ago? I mean, they weren't even really getting divorces, you know? That wasn't well, very commonplace. Well, and this this is stems from where my question stems from is, I, at what point is it, like, like she's not really black. I mean, is, is one of her parents yeah, black? Yeah, she's half. She's yeah, half? I believe her mom is, yeah. So is that yeah. just driving the... And, and for the, those uh, who don't realize who we're talking about, we're talking about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Well, those other two have just been a factory of babies over there. What, they got three now? I think they have three. Yeah, so that's... And I want to say two two boys maybe and a girl, but so now... And I don't even know... Have they announced the sex of the baby? I don't even know yeah, yet. Yeah, it's a boy. I was just excited. It's a boy. God, wow. Right why do I know gate. that? I'm losing a she lot of street it. credit right now. Man. No, but this is really cool. This is, you know, it'll be really interesting. I can't wait to see what this kid is going to look like, you know, growing up. So... I was doing. They a little... needed some color in that place. Oh God! Oh man! I tell you, just today. Uh, so I'm looking at this uh, news feed, and it's talking about the royal baby. And at the same same day that this royal baby was born, uh, Amy Schumer, the comedian, are you familiar with her? Oh, did she have her baby? She had her baby like the same day. And oh wow! I was know. thinking it would suck to have your baby the same day as the royal baby because you know not many people outside of your immediate family are going to care. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I, I see I see it's just the opposite. Like I this is the first I've talked about the royal baby. Uh but the reason why I bring it up is because Amy Schumer had her and I'm not a big Amy Schumer fan. I follow a ton of comedians very closely and she is not on the list. But I her, love her. Do you really? <laughs> see that's that's the that's the yin and the yang here. That's the contradiction that makes this work. Because she exactly. she actually commented in her birth announcement, you know, to the press. Yeah. That maybe he's the father. Yeah. 
<laughs> Who says that? Who says that? That's Amy crazy. Schumer. She's obviously she, joking. She had a tough pregnancy. Yeah, it she, like she's it. got that. She has an illness. I forget the name of it. Where you pretty much almost nonstop vomit the entire time. Yeah, they actually touched on pregnant. that in, in the in the article. But I, you know, I'm not a big fan because I I think she really uh, pushes out the double standard, like you know how they're they're trying to have uh, all these you know women's rights and women's movements and whatnot. And she's a woman, and she goes out and and her whole shtick is just kind of being a I don't know. I I want to use the word pig, but I shouldn't because <laughs> she's very <laughs> she's very aggressive with her comedy, and it's all about things that no one else could get away with. But you but know, that's whatever. that's the that's the thing though, Darren. That's kind of why I think she does actually bring a little more balance that way because women can be pigs too. You know, she can make jokes about things like this as a female. There are male comedians who make similar ones, but she's got a different. You know, you're right. There's some things she can get away with more because she's female. But, you know, they're just jokes that a female could relate to better. Well, I, I, she, I, she's done a lot for positive, uh, you know, positive body image for accepting your body. She's done a lot yeah, for that. Did you? I'll I got homework for you. Oh, you should watch because I'm pretty sure you probably haven't. You should watch. what What is the name of her latest movie? It's called something pretty. I feel pretty. I'm so pretty. Ooh man. Um I want to say it's on uh Prime right now. <laughs> it is a, an awesome movie. It's hilarious, but you should watch you it. You know, I've seen some of her, you know, I don't know, I just look at it like 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 I said I follow a lot of comedians and when I look at her, I just saw uh Joey Diaz uh here in town and there's some comedians out there that like like for her to do that and talk that way is is like a like a, a African American guy making black jokes, or or uh, Joey Diaz talking about drugs and all the you know jaded past that he's had. I mean, that's not funny. That's just it seems like uh, you know you're taking the easy way out. You know, anybody I can get up there. And I do think that. it's funny. I think it's funny. Like huh? you said, yin and yang. Yeah, you know? there you go. No, that's well, and, and and that you know somebody's buying her stuff. She's doing extremely well. It just caught me off guard when I read that thing in the paper or uh, in this article about her, her baby and she said well maybe he's the father yeah. like you know if, if if you are an average person who doesn't follow comp i mean that would be kind of a strange uh, thing to say but well you know yeah but i think that's hilarious here nor there back to the royal family how yeah, long is that old family. bird gonna make it like what is she like 95 and still in charge Oh, she's around 90 or in her early 90s, but yeah, she's doing amazing. Yeah, she really queen, does. She moves she around is. real well, but uh, you know, uh, she's sitting here burning up the clock for Charles. He's got to be pissed, right? Like, oh, uh, I don't know. I, I question whether Charles really wants to become king or not. You know, there was a lot of talk. You don't hear about it so much these days, but some years ago, there was a lot of talk about skipping over Charles and going right to William. They can just skip. I don't know if they can, but if he if he says, "Look, y'all, I'm just not feeling this," then it could go to William. <laughs> I don't know what their rules are. Is that a is that a direct quote? Look, y'all, I, I can see sure Charles speaking what, that way. I he, think I read it on Reddit or something. <laughs> he's probably uh, he's probably not wanting the limelight after his whole uh, marriage debacle. Well, you know, this is a good example of. And, and, and I would say to anyone who, if you feel, if you're sitting in a rough spot right now or you're involved in some major scandal, Darren, take note, he is what? a good example <laughs> of how you can turn it around. You know, when he, everything that went on with Diana and his cheating with Camilla, this man married his mistress and you don't even really hear about it. No one's even talking about it now. Well, it's that's because they shunned two. him and he's, he's been next to exiled and nobody wants any, you know. They don't want to advertise a bit it. Of a comeback. Same thing with look at like Tiger Woods, you know, <sighs> divorce, addicted to prescription medication, had a couple, you know, arrested for being under the influence and he was on pills, you know, had that whole thing where his wife beat his car with a golf club. I mean, it's just He's like human. he turned it around. And he just got the National Medal of Honor or something, didn't he? Bob yeah, probably knows that better than did. I do. Some Something like yeah, that. Yeah, he got pretty high awards. I'm sure the, the 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 folks are just going nuts with Trump and Tiger Woods in the same room. Yeah, that was Could a you little imagine weird. being a fly on the wall in that <laughs> meeting? But there's some real talk going, although Tiger's probably a little more straight laced than 
You know, he's got to straighten up his act because he already fell down hard once. He can't do it again. But he came back, and that's kind of the thing. That's that's the thing that I really like when we talk about celebrities or people who have, you know, who are in the limelight. When you can take a situation that's just a crap show and turn it around, it makes me think like, okay, if I got a little bit of, you know, minor scandal, say people are talking <laughs> on my block in my neighborhood. <laughs> That's how I roll every day. I can recover I'm from not anything. So concerned. That's what I'm saying. It's like, they're, they're a great example of how you can turn some major situations around. And when you think that maybe the world is against you, or you're never going to be able to get back to where you once were, you always can. For sure. And you know what? We're going to take a short break here, and when we come back, we'll dive a little deeper into this uh, this whole message we're trying to get across. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Lost Lake Creamery, old-fashioned ice cream parlor, located at 5575 Shoreline Drive in Mound, Minnesota, just off the Dakota Bike Trail and the Lost Lake Channel on the north end of Cook's Bay of Lake Minnetonka. Stop in and see them today. 24 flavors to choose from. Pick up some ice cream on the way to the lake or on your way home from the lake. The Lost Lake Creamery, old-fashioned ice cream parlor. Hey everyone, it's Darren from the DK Project. I wanted to tell you about my outdoor living space. I contacted NRD Landscape a few years ago, and they came out and helped me with the design and build of my outdoor dream space. I've actually used NRD on my last two projects, and both went better than expected. The team at NRD were so helpful throughout the whole process from design to completion. I mean, let's face it, the process is difficult to design and build your outdoor space. Why not bring in the pros at NRD Landscape? Whether you've been thinking about it for a while or you're just starting the process, contact NRD Landscape Design to get your project to the next level. Don't let another summer pass you by. Check them out on the web, nrdlandscape.com. Or give them a call at 952-212-2665 and tell them you heard it on the DK Project. And we're back. So uh, before the break, we were touching on the idea of uh, Tiger Woods getting the uh, huge honor at the White House and how he's recovered from a little misstep, you know, a little uh, confusion. And and, uh, there's been a lot of talk. I know a lot of people are pro-Tiger. I mean, golf is not the same sport without him. And, uh, you know, the viewers and whatnot, uh, the following is is much greater. But I know there's a lot of controversy to that. And and people are on both sides of the fence. I, you know, I I don't, I think people can recover from uh, making those mistakes. But a lot of people misinterpret that and don't know how to, you know, let it go. It's like, are you saying that they're, they think that he's been given too much of a pass or I guess, cause I'm, I, I'm on the side of the fence of, I think it's an amazing, a very inspiring comeback story, especially yes. in terms of addiction. And when you struggle with those issues on how with the right support, with the right help that works for you, you can turn a situation around. I'm not seeing the downside. Well, and, and, <laughs> and the reason why I bring it up is I, we've, I've talked about this on some other shows that. There's people out there that are like, ah, oh, he's a pig. You know, he shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't, uh, you know, be happy about him winning or any of this kind of crap. And it's like, you know, you got to let it go. People make mistakes, you know, you, you, you really got to uh, move on. But uh, now in this world that we're living in, people don't. You screw up once and you're shunned forever. And it's really difficult because of all of this type of thing. And, and you know, some, some incidences uh, that, that come to mind are, you know, there's, there's people that get offended. I had a dealing with a, with a tenant that, you know, was getting all your sexist and racist and all this. And it's like, no, you just throwing that out there. Like, yeah. no. And the way that they misinterpret it then becomes a flag on everybody. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I say. Yeah. There can be situations where, you know, and that's where I think it, 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 it takes us backwards in when we talk about working towards more equality in terms of minorities or even, you know, male, female. When you use that as a way to get out of a situation or to manipulate a situation, you're not you're not helping it. You're not right. helping the situation any. You're actually putting us back. You're exactly you know, you right. get. Yeah. When you get into situations of false accusations of sexual assault, things like that, you're not helping any movement or anyone but yourself. But overall. I think, you know, in a situation like with Tiger Woods, if people want to judge him because of his addiction that he struggles, struggled with, whether, you know, probably still struggling with, or they want to judge him on the fact of, you know, his infidelity, when you're a celebrity and you're in the limelight, we've created this mob mentality. 
with the internet and social media where people are so quick to jump on a bandwagon and to grab the pitchforks. It, it's scary to see the attack mode. I, you know what's scary? Yeah, I don't know about in where you live, but if you've ever been on a parent page for a school on Facebook... <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That I've never seen such. You want to talk controversy or a lot of outcries of, about things that sometimes are like, hey, this is not <laughs> that big a deal. Or you can't, I'll give you an example. There was a situation not that long ago, um, and it's in the Minnetonka area, and it was somebody had a disagreement with Chick fil A being in the schools. They're handing out coupons for Chick-fil-A and because Chick-fil-A has a history of being homophobic, among other things. I get that. What? I don't eat it. I do not eat at Chick-fil-A. For what? Um, I'd like to say mostly because they're homophobic, but that's not it. I don't Come like on. your food. It's junk food. We can't be bashing um, <laughs> we can't be bashing Chick-fil-A. <laughs> but I'm not bashing Chick-fil-A. I'm saying, hey, I don't support, you know, they support many anti-gay movements that are not pro-gay rights, but they have a right to do that. They have a right to put their money where they want. You know, watching, making sure there's a fine line between, you know, hey, this is what I believe and and hate speech. You're not making a lifetime commitment. You're just buying a chicken. Yeah. But the point that a couple of parents were making was we shouldn't have this in our schools because they have this history of, of being homophobic. And my view on that was, on a personal level, I agree. But are you going to vet every donor to the Minnetonka School District? Are you going to They're vet every it. individual parent before you let them donate based on their beliefs when it comes to, you know, race, That's religion, or with sex? Too much time on their hands, man. I don't know. With this going back to any tweet you've ever done or any any you know Instagram post, I mean, they go back. Oh. No, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i guessing what that is, is that's a person who owns a McDonald's or someone who owns a Burger King <laughs> and they're pissed no. off because they're giving Chick-fil-A the right of way. Yeah, no, I think more than likely, and, and we're just making an assumption here, I'm sure it's somebody who has more of a connection, has had a personal, when you've gone through a personal struggle, when you've been discriminated against, it's, you know, you fight a little harder about these things. And, and I completely get that. My only point on it was, where do you draw the line? If you say Chick-fil-A can't donate anything to the Minnetonka school district, well, what about families and donors who behind the scenes share their views? You know, you can't kind of pick and choose. As individual consumers, we can, we can pick and choose with our dollars, where we choose to support or not. Um, oh, I, totally I think it's just taking it too far. Because I feel like, well, and, and, and again, I don't even like Chick-fil-A, just as their food. I do. Yin and yang. <laughs> I don't care what they say. I love that chicken. I, you know what? I, I, I totally agree. I think everybody's entitled to their view, but that doesn't mean you need to push it on everybody else. You know, a good example of this is uh, my little dude plays soccer, and uh, these soccer parents are like the epitome of, of madness. Uh, mm-hmm. They complain about everything. They whine about everything. Like, we had a game on Sunday where we were losing, so every little call was horrible. Every kid was stalling. Everything was, you know, bad. Well, then last night we're winning, and the other team's pissing a fit, and our parents are like, "Oh, you know, they're just overreacting." And it's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I you know, I don't know. I've been, I, you know, I got older kids, so I've been down this road. And a lot of these parents are young, but I, I understand. Just let them have fun, you know. Don't be so petty. This ref that's out there who's making thirty bucks to spend, you know, three hours of his day dealing with this, he doesn't mm-hmm. need that crap from these parents. Yeah, and it's the same kind of thing where everybody thinks their opinion's such a big deal, and and they know more than everybody else. Just, you know, do the Hawaiian thing. You, find, you know, just you got to kind of, yeah, if can, can, if no can, no can. You know, there's a time and a place to take a stand on certain things. But like you <laughs> that said, could be our, that could be our new catchphrase. If yeah, can, can, if can, can, can. <laughs> <laughs> My dad says it all the time, which and it's basically what, it, you know, what it sounds like it is. If, if, if we can make it happen, you make it happen. If you can't, OK, let's move on. I let's like move that. on. Let's move on. I let's, like that. Let's, let's Every, move the needle forward. There's a lot let's of that in, in this parenting, and I see it a lot in sports, you know, because I've I've got the whole gamut of age kids. Well, so do you. And yeah. uh, and you know, and you see it. And these parents nowadays are just ridiculous. Don't touch my kid. Don't look at my kid. Don't tell my don't coach my kid. That would be the worst thing. It's like, wait a minute, yeah. what are we doing? But we all have to play at the highest level. We all want our kid to be a superstar. And the reality of it is. You know, what are the percentages of people that actually get anywhere in baseball or hockey or, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. come on, those numbers are minute. There's not a shot. 
but what are you yeah. going to do? You know? Yeah, exactly. There's nothing wrong with, you know, and I've always, I, one time, I, one year, years ago, I sent out a Christmas card and I said something along the lines there. I sent a, my own one and only Christmas letter. And it was like, you know, the, my kids continue to do pretty mediocre, but you know, <laughs> you know I, mean, I, I had decided I was going to send an honest Christmas card. <laughs> you know, no one's been in jail, so we're pretty happy about that because last year was a doozy, let me tell you. I mean, <laughs> was this uh, was this uh, pre sobriety where you were maybe uh, parting hard and decided to write a Christmas uh, no, letter? No, it, it was it was pre. I was it was before I got into my heavy drinking days. And for our listeners that don't know, I've been sober for about twenty months now. Thank God. But I'd love to I get my hands on my, that letter. Yeah, I wasn't into my heavy drinking. I probably I have it somewhere. I think I actually <laughs> ended up publishing it as one of my columns because I was just like, you know, I'm kind of the opposite of that in that I know when my kids do great, I'm like, hey, good job. But I probably should be getting more excited about some of their accomplishments. <laughs> I, Where I'm sitting over there like, eh, you know, I'm the one who told my daughter, if you want to do marching band, that's fine. I will pay for it. I will make sure you can get there, but I am not sitting in the bleachers in the cold to watch wow. you march around a field. That's tough I don't love. like the music. You know, that's a whole other show right there where we can get into uh, this whole <laughs> tough love oh, totally. and, and, and being in reality, uh, you know, cause the, uh, the cell phone parents and the, and the, you know, my kid's the greatest thing, man, that goes on and on. But uh, for today, yeah. we got to put a wrap on this thing. We're, uh, we got through it that quick. I'm telling you, there's yeah, a lot we'll of hot bushing issues it. out there. Hot bushing, we'll, bushing. Mm -hmm. we'll Let's go with that. Uh, give us our get a give us our sign off tag. Hey, I want to let people know too before we sign off that you can find us at the DK Project Podcast dot com or on iTunes or anywhere you get your podcasts. So tune in, subscribe, tell all your friends, leave us some reviews. And Natalie, what are our parting words? I don't know. What can? Oh, no. If can, can. If no can, no can. Man, that went over well. <laughs> we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, Natalie. Goodbye. That's a wrap for today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and tell all your friends. If you'd like to reach out, you can use the studio line at 612-504-6500 or by email, the DK Project Podcast at gmail.com. And of course, there's always social media at the DK Project Podcast. Thanks for tuning in.